Hey everybody, I wanted to take a little bit of time here and show you um, a neat website and um, the link will be posted, but I wanted to show you how I get here, okay? So I'm in Google, I'm just going to type P-H-E-T, FET, and you'll notice that what comes up first is these P-H-E-T, online physics, chemistry, blah, blah, blah. So this is great, this is exactly the website, the first one that we want, so we're going to go there and then you can play with the simulations and then you can go to chemistry you can play with any of these simulations they're actually kind of fun we're going to be using them often in chemistry class but i wanted to show you how to get to the list and so chemistry and then it lists a whole bunch of chemistry things and the one that we're going to be specifically using today is um, this states of matter basic okay states of matter basic okay so if you click on that it'll ask you um, if you want to run it it uses Java so make sure you have Java enabled on your computer and then when you open it up you'll get something that looks like this okay actually let me make this just a touch smaller so that you can see it all okay good now that should be right in the picture for you okay so, what this represents is um, liquid water, okay? And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to observe how the states of matter behave, okay? And so this is kind of a good lead-in um, between states of matter and changes between states of matter. Um, and so, so let's take this step by step here the neon you notice you see that neon is just a, a blue sphere much like the video that i showed you argon is a pink sphere okay representing the sphere just represents one atom if we got out our our um our atomic goggles and could see atoms this is what we would be seeing okay and then oxygen Oxygen is a pair of atoms because when we find oxygen in nature, it's actually bonded together. So oxygen is never found alone. It's always O2. So this is oxygen. And then we have water, that common kind of tricky element that we have. Okay. And so notice that here you can see that each molecule of water, each particle has one oxygen and two hydrogens attached to it. I'm trying to follow the one. Okay. So that makes things kind of neat. And then we can turn it into a solid. We can turn it into a liquid. And we can turn it into a gas. Okay. So here's the solid water. Now, solid water is unique because, again, another reason why water is unique, it is less dense. It floats on top of liquid water. That's because when it arranges itself and it does isn't allowed to move, solid water takes up more space than liquid water. So if we look at how it's arranged, you'll see that the solid water compared to the liquid water, <laughs> solid water is, is less tightly packed. So that means it's going to be less dense than the liquid. And that's nature, that's actually a really neat way for nature to help us because imagine if water froze over in the middle of the winter and then it sunk to the bottom of the lake all the wildlife would be trapped at the bottom of the lake and it would just be a mess okay so let's go to neon here real quick okay this is solid neon okay notice here those particles are stuck together they're slightly shimmying but they're really not moving um around too much they are being bound together okay now in order to break whoa hey hey wait back back okay Whew. okay and in order to break the force that's holding those together okay that force that's holding them together the intermolecular force we just have to heat it up now remember Temperature is a measure of how fast the molecules are moving. So the faster the molecules are moving, the higher the temperature is. So here, it's a solid. They're not moving very fast, but we can add heat. And if we do add heat, okay, notice what's happening to them. 
as we heat it up, they're moving faster, faster, faster. It appears to still be kind of a solid, okay? Some of these things are jumping off into the, you know, into just jumping off. But now look at what's happening. As we heat it up, notice some of these things are really taking off. We've probably undergone a state change, a change of state or a phase change. So we've gone from a solid, maybe even all the way through from a solid to a gas, okay? And we've only done that at 40 Kelvin, just as a reference that's somewhere around negative 350 Fahrenheit, okay? That's really, really cold, okay? And so, of course, so there's what the, I started at a solid at 13 degree, 13 Kelvin. Now we're at 26 Kelvin and it's a liquid. Now notice what the liquid does, though. The liquid state, those particles, some are jumping off, but mainly those particles are moving a little more, but they're still kind of staying all bunched up. This is what causes them to have the same, um, a, a constant volume, a definitive volume, but a, the, uh, a shape of whatever the container it takes up. Okay, and then when we go to a gas at 55, notice here what's going on. Wow, all the molecules are moving independently of each other, and they, yeah, they're running into each other, and they may be found next to each other, but they are moving independent of each other. They're not attracted to each other. They're just moving randomly, and so this is why gases take the shape of the container they're in. So they have indefinite volume. They can expand to fill whatever container, or they can shrink if we make the container smaller. We, they could f just, f however much gas can fit in the container. And so this is one of the things that we, s this is why we say gases are really compressible. Look at how much space a gas needs or has so that you can squeeze it all together. Okay, so now go back to our water. Okay, because now I want to talk to you a little about state changes, okay? Now, when we go a, a little more detail about state changes at least. So there's a solid. So we're going to heat up the solid, okay? Now that solid's going to heat up, and as we know, the molecules are going to start kind of moving faster and faster and faster. Eventually, it's going to turn into a liquid. Now these molecules, notice what's happened. We're only kind of changing how the molecules are moving. Are the white and red balls separating? No, we're not breaking the bonds holding the actual particle together. We're only breaking the forces that are attracting the particles to each other. Okay, so that is what a physical change is. It's a change in the in the forces. It's when we overcome or create more forces in order to uh, for uh, in a in a set of particles, so that's a physical change. It's still water. No matter what we do, it's still H two O. We're not changing the bonding. Okay, so we can go solid. Okay, and again, I explain why this is less dense than liquid water. It's got more space. It's funny. There's very few liquids that do that. Okay, and then there's the liquid water. It's kind of cool, and gas. So what you can do is you can go back um, and you can play around with this. Okay, here's something where you can actually take this and you can change the volume if you want to work with that tab. Um, but you can go to this website and you can play around with it. Let me make sure that I show it to you here. There it is right here in this video. And so at the end of this, I just want to make sure that you answer those questions. Um, Okay, so there it is. That's your first FET simulation.